Hey everyone, today we'll be going through the underground tools available within NeuroDesigner to help you kickstart your underground modeling. We're going to start our design by assuming you already have the DXF imported into the project. We have a link in the description if you need a refresher on this. This design and example DXF will also be available uh, at our Fresh Test website to download and follow along. So looking around our design, we can see our GIS has been overlaid as a DXF, and we'll use this to help place our objects and get familiar with the tools. You can see on the left-hand side, a few icons have been added for underground functionality. The first tool we're going to use is the trench tool. With this, we can define the route our cables and conduits will take. In this case, we'll follow where our cables are in the DXF, which are these green lines here. After clicking on the trench tool, we can click along our cable route to place the trench like so. The second tool we'll use is the trench waypoint tool. This allows us to place an additional vertex on our trench route. This gives us extra flexibility in our trench design. At any time, we can go back to the move and select tool and click one of the red crosses, which are our trench waypoints, and move them accordingly. You can also see when we click on the trench waypoints, we can view its properties in the properties panel. From here, we can manually adjust a few parameters, such as the ground offset, which is the depth of the trench, its location in terms of X and Y, and also if we wanted to, the radius at this specific waypoint. After we're happy with our trench route, we can use the trench section tool to start placing conduits and direct buried slots into our trenches. Clicking on the trench section tool, we can see a drop down of all the different cross sections in our library. In this case, we'll just use the default single, single conduit and place it along side the road. We do this by clicking to start our section, hovering along the trench and clicking again to end the section. Zooming in, we can see that it's placed blue crosses to our trench sections. And we can see that a single blue conduit is within the trench. As before, we can click on the blue crosses, also known as trench section points, to change the name, move them along the trench route, or change what cross section should be used. For this road crossing trench right here, we're going to go back to the trench section tool and change this cross section to the preset 2x2 two two 150 mil conduits. Again, we click on the trench to define its starting point, hover along the route, and click again to end it. If we zoom in, we can see the blue crosses for the trench section and the four conduits that's added in for this road crossing. Next, we'll use the pillars tool to place pillars along our design. In this case, we have these green squares in our design. Clicking on the tool, we can again select the pillar type from our libraries and click to place our pillar. The next tool we'll use for our design is the substation tool. In the properties panel, we can select the substation type from our libraries and change the orientation, which just rotates the sub. For this design, the blue squares is the symbol for substation, and we'll just click to place our substation. After we've placed all objects in our design, we can then connect our substation to our pillar using the cable tool. Again, in the properties tab, we can specify the cable type and voltage. We can also specify the pillar type so that we can place pillars as we lay our cables. Clicking on the substation, we can see a few options pop up. In this case, we would select the secondary side for our substation for this LV network. As we trace along the transfer route, we can see our cable being laid. Uh, as an additional thing, you can also click on a trench section and change the placement slot the cable will go into. Otherwise, it will default, default into the first empty slot. Clicking on the pillar, we can terminate the cable and right click to continue laying it. The last thing to do is to add loads to our pillars. We do this by using the service points tool, which is a triangle icon on the tools panel. We can see in the properties panel, we can choose the load which is, the service point, which is the service point type and the phase that it's connected to. We can then click on the pillar which, at which the load is connected to and click again to place the approximate service point. Placing these services allows us to perform voltage drop calculations on our design. 